plant a church or how to build a church in the real way. So uh, let's listen carefully uh, how we can continue our ministry of a church planting or church building. Let's all stand and read the Bible from Matthew chapter 16 and 18 and another place is in John. So first we will read from Matthew chapter 16 and 18 and then we will go to the John 20, uh, chapter 21. Let's read it all together in one voice, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Okay, ready to go? And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and thou art a good deal of my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, this is a particular verse that Jesus Christ spoke to the Peter. And then next, open our uh, John chapter 21. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. We will read all together. Also, ready, go. So when they had done, Jesus was coming to Simon, son of Jonas, thou hast thou been more than this? He said to him, Yet, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Eat my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Be my sheep. Let's pray. Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to this earth to save the sinners 2,000 years ago. And according to the plan of the salvation of God, not only he taught his disciples, but Jesus himself, he built the very first church. Lord, since that very first church started, that the ch churches begot churches, and the church plant the church, and the church build the church, and he came all the way to Korea and to the Philippines. Lord, please help us to understand what God wants to do at each local church and how we should continue to build a mission church as a, the main ministry of the church. Lord, as we go on, and searching into the Word of God today, how God wanted us to continue to the building the church. Please help us to be challenged. Help us to be hearing the voice of God. If there is any brothers and sisters that who are more and more wants to be uh, involved and contributed in the ministry, Lord, please help them to open their heart. And please help me to preach your word effectively. And I pray, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, while Jesus and Peter was talking and conversing, uh, the Jesus was uh, talking to Peter. And in here, in Matthew chapter 16 and 18, Jesus said, uh, upon this rock I will build my church okay do you know which is bigger rock and the stone of course rock is much bigger rock is a huge gigantic uh, size of a stone and Jesus pointed himself because we know that Jesus is called rock and he said upon this rock I will build my church. And the, some, some people were saying that, oh, Jesus was pointing a Peter as a rock. But actually, the Petero 
In, uh, the, in Greek, it means a small stone. So when Jesus said, upon this rock, and he was pointing himself that, I will build my church on myself. And Peter, small stone, uh, you uh, feed my lamb. And this was what uh, Jesus was talking to uh, the Peter. And in order to remind Peter that uh, he should he should take care of the the born again Christians, that he was repeatedly emphasizing. He he repeatedly asked him the same question three times, and that's why the Bible says after answering two times. On the third time, Peter was grieved. Maybe he was worried. Oh, does not Jesus know that I love him from my heart? And finally his answer was, Lord, you know everything. And because you know everything, you also know that I love you. And so, uh, but Jesus was still answering him, you feed my sheep. And uh, so in the, in the Bible, all humans, especially the born again Christians, are directly compared with a ship. Because a ship is always, uh, always has to follow the leaders, always have to follow the shepherd. They have an eyes, but they cannot see far. They have a ears, but the ear is much better than eyes. Uh, they do not have any protective uh, horns or the claw and no sharp teeth. And so they are very, very unprotected uh, animals among the animals. So the ships, they always have to be protected by the shepherd. And so uh, that is why Jesus is always comparing the human beings uh, to uh, the ship, especially the born again uh, Christians. And then uh, they are asking, uh, the Jesus is asking uh, Peter, uh, feed my lamb. And as we read uh, from Matthew chapter 16 and 18, uh, that we know that Jesus himself is the one who built the very first uh, church. And, but if we read the Bible, First uh, Corinthians chapter two, chapter two, verse uh, seven and eight, uh, twenty-seven and then twenty-eight. Uh, it says, "The plan of salvation through the local church it was hidden in the old, old, uh, the old, uh, old Testament. So it was mentioned as mystery or as a secret. So in." First Corinthians chapter two, verse twenty-seven and eight. It says, "But we we speak with the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory." So, the plan of salvation of a whole Gentile world was hidden during the Old Testament and also to, uh, to the, the nation of Israel because uh, initially what God had planned that because He had chosen the Israel people, the Jewish nation as a chosen nation, He wanted to save, He wanted to save the Israel nation and then have the Israel nation go to the Gentile and then help the Gentile to be saved. This was, uh, this was what originally the God had planned. And this plan, of course, was hidden to the Jewish nation and during the, uh, the Old Testament. That's why it is mentioned as a secret. But after Jesus came from, from heaven according to the plan of salvation of God, and what happened? When Jesus came as a Messiah, and exactly according to the prophecies that was made by many prophets during the Old Testament, and Jesus came exactly the same. 
but the Jewish leaders, because of their own egoistic, uh, egoistic, uh, their uh, greediness, and uh, the, this greediness for the power, and they rejected Jesus Christ. Not only Jesus Christ they rejected, the John the Baptist who came a little bit earlier than Ju the Jesus, and he was preparing, he was shouting to the Jewish people to repent and then to, to meet the Messiah, but they also killed the John the Baptist. And after John the Baptist, when, when Jesus came, that they also killed Jesus. They knew that he was a Messiah. They knew that he's a son of God. But they stirred up the heart of the innocent, the, the, the crowd, the mobs, and they crucified him. They brought him to the, the courthouse and brought it to the pilot and then uh, he was crucified. And after that, what happened? After Jesus was crucified, and later on, those the, the disciples like a Stephen that when he was witnessing what he has seen but they did not want to admit their mistake and they also killed the Stephen now what it means what God has originally planned for the salvation of a whole world through the Jewish people and sent Jesus the Messiah, the Jewish, they rejected him. Strangely, one time I met, I was sitting next to the Jewish lady on the way to the Euro, it's many years ago, and she introduced herself as a Jewish. So I was very glad to sit, happened to sit next to the Jewish because we read all about the Jewish from the Bible. So I, I commented to her, oh, you are a very blessed nation. And she kept asking me, why? Because God has chosen you. And she said, no. God did not choose us. We chose God. And so I stopped talking to her. Because if I fall the goal, then there will be an argument. This is, this is how the Jewish, many Jewish people still waiting for the Messiah. They, are, they do not acknowledge Jesus as a son of God, as a Messiah. So they rejected and uh, the Jewish people killed the John the Baptist. And Jewish people killed the Jesus Christ, Messiah. And Jesus, the Jewish also killed the Stephan, the deacon, who was in the pool, uh, was very full of the Holy Spirit. And he was even uh, seeing what is happening in the heaven. And he was uh, telling about the Jewish uh, people, but they stoned uh, him to death. Now, Finally, when Jewish people rejected the plan of salvation to start among the Jewish nation, God changed the plan. God changed the plan, and that time when Jewish was really crucifying the, the disciples of Jesus and uh, killing or persecuting the follower of Jesus and uh, Apostle Paul, his, his another name is Saul, and he was one of the leaders in, in the, the Pharisee and Jewish religion, and then he was a teacher, and he was a scholar, he was very well educated, and he was a leading, and actually he was a standing at the, at the side of the Jewish kill, the stoning of the Stephan to death. But... God is God of mightiness. And when Saul, he was carrying the warrant to arrest another group of a Jew, the, the Jesus follower in the place of Damascus, and he was going there with the warrant. But Jesus came, and he encountered Jesus, and he collapsed, and he accepted Jesus Christ, and he became born again Christian. This is how Jesus or God is changing his life and also our life. How many of us we are living the life similar to the Apostle Paul's life before he said uh, the changing of his life? So after 
that Saul was changed and then he began to carry the name of Paul and then uh, Jesus specially gave him a, a, a training course and then he was taking the position or the responsibility as an apostle specially for the Gentile. Who is the Gentile? Non-Jewish is all Gentile. Koreano, Filipino, Americano, or uh, Hapon, or whatever. <laughs> it's all, all a Gentile. And so, if we read, it clearly says, in Acts chapter 13, verse 46 to 48, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It wasn't necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing it, ye put it from you, and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the end of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So here, Apostle Paul, that the Bible is saying that because the Jewish rejected the gospel message of a salvation, so they stopped teaching worthy, worthy uh, Jewish, and so Apostle Paul, and they turned toward the Gentiles. And so because of the, this uh, turning uh, from the Jewish to the Gentile, that many people were happy to hear that, and they were saved. And so we are also happy because it happened. So you and I could be saved and we can be ready to go to heaven when we die. And also Acts chapter 18 verse 5 and 6, it says, And when Silas and uh, Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jewish Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentile. So he proclaimed. He told them, because you are rejecting, you will be responsible for your own death, but I will go to the Gentile. So when once he start, in fact, if we, go, if we read a little bit more, uh, at first, after the really, uh, the, the changing of his uh, spiritual life, the Apostle Paul tried his best to uh, witness to his own people, the Jewish. But they did not listen. They keep on persecuting him and uh, stoning to him. He was really punished many times by his own brethren. So that's why he decided. And Jesus told him to go to the Gentile. And so he went. So when he started going and witnessing to the Gentile. If we read uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 24, 28, every place he goes, he's planting or building a local, a local church. Acts chapter 14, verse 24 to 28, it says that, the, uh, and after they had passed throughout the Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and they, when they had uh, preached the word in Perga, they went on down to the Atalia and then sailed to Antioch and from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. And when they, come, they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there had they abode long time with the disciples. So every city they traveled. They were able to win the souls, maybe one family after the other family, and then preach the gospel. Because Apostle Paul himself was a, a Bible scholar. He was a very well educated uh, the Old Testament. And now he got the New Testament, and uh, with a risen Lord, 
and so he was able to match the note the uh, the picture of the Messiah from the Old Testament, and then he was proving that Jesus, who was crucified, is a really a Messiah. So because of that, there were many people who were able to uh, believe, uh, believe uh, and uh, follow the Jesus Christ. Now, this is how Jesus told Apostle Paul, go to the Gentile and preach the gospel. And that means build a church. When Jesus told Apostle Peter that I will build my church and then tell him, feed my land. And the same commandment is being inherited or transferred to generation to generation. And during last 2,000 years ago, during last 2,000 years, from Jerusalem, the very first church, and then the next to the uh, Samaria or Antioch, and then according to G the travel mission trip traveling of, of uh, the uh, uh, Paul, and then he planned. He had gone through three mission trips as a missionary and another additional trip as a sinner or prisoner, and all the way to Rome. So altogether, four mission trips that Apostle Paul did and that he planted many churches in Asia. Nowadays, we call it Turkey and Greece and uh, Europe and all these areas, Rome, Italy, and we can see that there are many churches who were built. But some years ago, uh, the mommy and I was able to travel to visit some of these uh, 19 old churches uh, as our uh, anniversary trip. And uh, not build, the big buildings were not, no build, buildings are standing, mostly the pillars and the rocks and everything, but still that we were able to see where the, the church in Turkey and Greece and the Rome, where the, the Apostle Paul was uh, traveling uh, with uh, his followers. It was a really a meaningful trip, even though it's a very costly and very difficult, but <coughs> This is how Apostle Paul traveled and built. Acts chapter 22, verse 21, it really proves that Jesus was telling to uh, Apostle Paul. He said, And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentile. And since then, in the whole book of the Acts. He made a first mission trip in Acts chapter 13 and 14. Chapter 13 and chapter 14, we can read uh, the first mission trip and Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 15 from 35 to chapter 18 to 22, he made a second trip. And Acts chapter 18 to 18 verse 23 to chapter 21, 26, he made a third trip, mission trip. And Acts chapter 27, as a prisoner, he traveled to Rome with the military on the on the boat in order to be in order to be in the court judgment under under the emperors in uh, in the Rome. So uh, this is how the early day church was planted. And uh, Apostle Paul was a missionary sent a church in Antioch. Antioch is uh, in the, the very east coast, east, east part of the Turkey nowadays. And then he, uh, he, can, he travels uh, tens of thousand miles, maybe on foot. Maybe he did not even have a tricycle. He did not even have a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Pedicab. Maybe he did not even have a pedicab that time. But on foot, he traveled tens of thousand miles for many, many years. Go after the one time, and then after a few years, he go back again and then look after the same church, whether it's growing again, the stronger, or they have a problem like this. And this is how. Jesus has told his disciples to plant or to build a church. 
In fact, a building a one church is not that simple. Some of the big churches in Korea, where they have a hundred thousand members as a member, and if they uh, if they train the young pastors, okay, the the pastor A, uh, maybe you can have about two thousand members, and you go and start another new church, and with uh, some budget or location, very easy to do that way. But in the biblical way, I'm not saying that is wrong, but the, in a biblical way and conventional way, you send one missionary first. Like uh, Jesus sent uh, uh, Apostle Paul. Like we sent uh, uh, Pastor Nardo to the Bohol. And whenever we send one pastor and his family, and he has to, what he has to do, he does not have a church building yet, he does not have any places yet, so he goes there on Monday through Saturday, do the door knocking and meet some place on the streets on the, the plaza and do the soul winning and if God gave them a one soul and then try best to have a Bible study in that family's home so when they come to Monday Bible study home and Tuesday Bible study home or Wednesday Bible study home or Thursday or Friday Bible study home and they, then they, he can come up with about four or five families already. Then they pray together and they say, why don't we have our own Sunday worship? And then they put their money together and they rent a small house in the small uh, barangay in the same area and they meet together on Sunday morning for the worship. This is a very conventional way and this is still going on in the Philippines and it went that way when I was young in Korea. When American missionary came, we also traveled that way. And I still remember what I learned from my missionary 40 years ago, 50 years ago and I am practicing that in the Philippines. Yeah, how much I have to thank God that what I learned from the American missionary that I am practicing in the Philippines. This is how I I studied with the, the under the church name. I studied with the Pastor Nardo, and uh, as I told you before, when Pastor Nardo and I we bring the Bible and they try to go up to the door knocking, when they see that we are carrying the Bible, they do not even answer the door because they knew exactly that we are not Catholic. And so they do not want to entertain. This is very really hard to uh, do the uh, to the church planting this way. Now uh, I can briefly tell you when in 1960 when missionary Patrick came to Korea under the uh, BBFI Bible Baptist uh, Fellowship International Mission uh, missionary. At that time, is actually worse than what it is now in the Philippines. Very, very difficult uh, because that was right after the two consecutive war in Korea. One, the Second World War and then Korean War until 1953. So 1960 when he came, everything was all destroyed. Very, very poor. But they still go on door knocking and soul winning. And I'm glad that I learned something from them also. Okay, that uh, Central Baptist Church in Texas sent a missionary Patrick to Korea. And then, according to his dispensation, or he will, that I got saved along the way. And then, 2000, year 2000, FBBC started here. Exactly not this church, not this place, but another place, but still the same FBBC. And 2009, we sent out our very first missionary pastor, Pastor Nardo, to Bohol, because his, his hometown is Bohol. And uh, 2011, we, we sent Pastor, uh, not Pastor, the uh, brother Arman, uh, as a to, to start the mission work in the Pampanga and then followed by Brother Phil. And because uh, Brother Arman is uh, very heavily loaded with the studying at the seminary and he excused, okay, uh, he wants to concentrate on the seminary, so okay, go ahead. And then you push through the, uh, all the way to the seminary study. 
And still, our church is supporting uh, his transportation while he's spending. And Brother Phil joined, and now he is traveling from uh, from uh, Tai Tai uh, to uh, Pampanga every Sunday. And then we are supporting their transportation because they do not have income. Now, sooner or later, we will be sending another a well-trained brother plus to Pampanga. And it is God's will. It's not our will, God's will. And then he will be going there. And this time, he is willing to stay in the church seven days a week. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, it's not, nobody's pushing him. But if he has a burden, he can do that. And then, uh, of course, then we, we are responsible for his uh, living expenses, and then we have to find a way. Actually, there's a two ways of uh, two ways of uh, starting the uh, a mission church uh, in terms of a financial support. <coughs> If the church is already have a big number of members when they uh, when they start the church and their income is enough, then pastor does not have to work, and then he, the the members can bring their tidings which God has blessed them and they their offering and so the church whole operate the uh, the ministerial cost of the church and the living expenses of a pastor can be supported by the local church, but. Mostly in the Philippines, it's very difficult to do that way. I have worked with the one church in Cebu for almost 20 years and uh, helped the church to be uh, the training the young people so they can send a young missionary to the uh, many islands. And all, for almost 20 years, there was about more than 50 churches that we were able to help them to start a mission church. But mostly, even nowadays, mostly, they are depending on the financing support from the mother church because they do not have any skill, because the church, the members do not have an income. It's very difficult without having any skills. So in, a, in a, such a cases, that if the, past, the members cannot really uh, grow their tidings or the income because there's no, no income at all, then pastor himself has to follow the steps of uh, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, according to the Bible record, he is, uh, let's say, uh, Acts, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 4, uh, I'm not going to read it all, but he met a business partner called Aquila and Priscilla couple. And then he was, uh, the same, the Bible says they have the same skill of the business, which is a tent making. So tent making or tent repairing. Uh, so they work together and make money. And not for their own food, but they used it for the ministry, for the mission work. And uh, let's open uh, First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It, it, it is a very one simple verse, but it tells what how Apostle Paul continued his ministry. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, for ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Which means, because the members, the church, the congregation is a very uh, financially uh, not big enough, so he does not want to be a chargeable or burden to the church people. So Apostle Paul saying that he also worked and then he preached the gospel. This is the pattern that another way of uh, starting a new church, especially for the, past, the brothers who are coming from FPBC Korea. God also give us the wisdom and the, the way of a life as a pastor. So we are, my family is still working, and we found that it is more effective for the mission church to start 
in the Philippines that you need to have a skill until and you, you need to have a skill and to make an income until your church become big enough so your own members tithing and offering will be enough to support the, uh, the church ministry and the living of the pastor family. So until then, it is really uh, very important to, to have some skills as a pastor or a minister. In 2008, when we were celebrating 8th church anniversary, we invited Pastor Nardo and his wife uh, as a second speaker to the mission, mission uh, the, as an anniversary. And after that anniversary is finished, we put them in the bakery school for two months. And they learned a uh, whole uh, two months, very, very uh, well acquired uh, skills. And of course, they already have some experience before, but they learned it well, and that our church was able to uh, buy the big oven and all the, the necessary things to have uh, the bakery uh, business in Bohol at the same place where the church is. So this is uh, how they can make. But this uh, the barangay is a very small population, so they cannot make big. Uh, only if uh, one day one day consumption is only six kilos and make about 150 or 200 <laughs> bread only. But still, still, if they sell it all, they can make one uh, 15,000 a month. So, uh, of course, you have to deduct some uh, capital. But still, if you can increase a little bit more, the one church family and the ministry can be done. But in the, in the Bohol, it's not enough because we also run a seminary, which is uh, every night about 20 people has to eat together. So that costs a lot. And until some business can finance the church ministry and seminary, we really have to support them and pray for them. This is the FPBC Korea's mission, so we are responsible. That's why we are saying you have to, you have, to have a willing heart to give a support to your mission churches in Bohol and, uh, and the seminary as you're part of the ministry. Now, like I said, in Pampanga Mission, we had in 2011, the brother Arman is uh, studying the seminary, and brother Phil is also alternating preaching together. And I'm sure that uh, Sister Michelle is uh, still here in Korea, but when she go back, and she will be somehow, I don't know exactly how God will uh, coordinate, but uh, uh, Michelle and the Arman will be very important person uh, in the ministry, but Arman has a, a still another two three years to study, so we do not know how it's going to be uh, continued that way. So we have to pray for them. Now, if Brother Blas, who's been trained in our church, I think six almost six years, a little more than five years, yeah, more than five years. And now, during the last one year, he's been trained as an assistant to the pastor, and he's learning all this, uh, how to handle the, handle the uh, things in the ministry. And it's not me who is training him. It's God himself is training him for his ministry. This church and me, we are the instrument only. When God is training somebody, to, to use that person in, for his ministry, for his church building, then we as a church, as a sending church, we really need to support and pray. And so, now, Brother Blas is also learning how to do the bakery. And it's been already three months. And uh, he will be continuing until the May, uh, when he's go home, and that's why he really is getting serious. If the, past, if the brother class is getting serious, we also need to get serious because we need to. We are the one to support him and help him. So our mission church will be planted there. Now, when you think about how to build a church, 
you have to realize the practical situation, the realistic situation, how we need to pray, not only pray, how we, we need to give the money, and how we need to bring the tithing for the ministry so that that money can be used in the mission field and to support our families, and how we can carry on the ministry. And when you go home, whether you will be near to the Bohol Church or the uh, Pampanga Church, then you can be also used only if your heart and your knowledge is prepared. If your heart is not ready, if your heart or your situation, especially the brother or sister who are trained in Korea wants to be in the ministry, but the family is not happy with that decision, it cannot be done. It cannot be done. And so that's why we really asking the brothers who wants to be in the ministry and we are telling them make sure that you have agreeable and the coordinating wife or husband that you can be in the ministry. Otherwise, the ministry cannot last very long. You start with a good ambition and excitement, but a part of the family is against it, then the ministry cannot go on. So that's why they say uh, to the pastors, the biggest hindrance in the ministry will be your own spouse. Especially the pastor will be the, the, husband, the man, so then will be <laughs> the wife if the wife is not in the same spirit. So we really need to pray for uh, Brother Nardo and Susan, and Brother Arman and Michelle, and Brother Phil and Jean Mayer, and also Brother Ablas, and Marlon, was you? Marilo. Marilo is his wife. And this is how that uh, we can plan to build a church. And as we, sh as we see there, the, the map of the Philippines over there in the back, we also have another mission church been praying in Iloilo. <laughs> no, the timing is very good. But the husband and the wife is both sitting here. Amen. We just need to pray hard. You know, when God wants to use somebody for His ministry, He does not give a uh, chance when you are not ready. Not only spiritually, not only the mentality, which means the knowledge, but also body, physically, as well as financially. If church has a congregation who can support, the pastor will no need to work. No need to work. And, but... Working for the ministry is nothing wrong. It's not against the Bible because Apostle Paul also did. So we call it the tent maker ministry. But if the church is growing and you have enough uh, the tidings and offerings for your own ministry and the life of a pastor, then it's better to set aside and let them, somebody else handle it. You concentrate on the ministry. And that will be much for uh, much better for the benefit of a spiritual side of the congregation. So, some of the brothers in our church, uh, they are already taking some courses of, uh, while the brother Arman is taking the regular uh, seminary courses in the Karaokan church, but others who want to be in the ministry, they are taking the, uh, the courses, what we call it, extension class extension class from the seminary in the Bohol and they follow. They need to follow the exact curriculum and then study, teach themselves and they take the exam. Uh, even though I'm not uh, the lecturer, on, but uh, we give them a book and they give them a time and so they can study and prepare and then the, take the examination by the faculty members in Bohol and then uh, we, we forward all the record, record and then if they pass, they can also graduate at the same time as the other uh, graduating students in the, in the uh, seminary. So, remember the promise of God. If you prepare to be used for this ministry, 
not only for your need for the ministry, but for your family's need, God will take care of And if you do not have that faith, if you do not trust what God has promised to all the people who wants to be in the ministry more seriously, and they are worrying about what if I do not have enough income for my family, and I, can I still go into the ministry? And if you doubt that you are not fully trusting what God has said, all your needs will be met when God fulfilled His promises. Now, <clears throat> FPBC Korea ministry will continue this way and we will build one mission by one mission. Whether me and mommy will finish our term, the somebody will take and probably will continue. But, the Bohol, Pampanga, if God also give us the Iloilo, these churches will continue and start winning the soul and they will have a generation to generation. In our church is very unique. They call it because we have only one generation. There's no children's Sunday school. There's no the, the nursery, nursery for the, the infants. No seniors. Only 30, 40s. All. But when Pampanga or the Bohol or Iloilo and other of these city, the churches, they will run from the, the elderly, the adults, young and kinders and infant for generations, maybe three generations to four generations for continuing the ministry. That will be a wonderful ministry that we like to see. Now, nowadays in Pampanga, the one thing that we really need to pray for is we do not have a pastor, uh, resident pastors in Pampanga. In Bohol we have, but Pampanga we need to, very as quickly as possible, we have to send one resident pastor until, until they are financially uh, independent and they are, they are uh, organized, then they are still part of our ministry. They are our mission. But if they are, for example, if, if Bohol, they, the, the members and the pastor said, uh, Pastor Lee, uh, our finance is no problem. We have enough church members baptized and we want to organize a church. Then we will let them organize a church and there will be no more our mission church. Then we can be relieved from sending the money to that church. Maybe the, minute, the, maybe the seminary we may still have to in case of a bowl. But the church, church wise, if they want to be organized and if they want to be independent, then we are free from uh, supporting them. Same thing will happen in, uh, in Pampanga, but in Pampanga we do not have a pastor yet. So I am from Korea, I am still acting as a pastor, that's why I'm going there almost every month. Two weeks in Korea, two weeks in the Philippines, one week in Bohol, one in Pampanga. But please pray. Sooner or later, we need to appoint a pastor. Until they are uh, organized, it will be a mission pastor, which is assistant to me, because I will be still remaining as the pastor of a church, as a mission church. But, but he will be fully responsible for uh, door knocking, soul winning, training the young people, and all other activities in the church. So we need to have one. And the, the people among the brothers who are already trained, then we have to appoint and send. And uh, once, once uh, it is decided, and all the brothers in the brothers and sisters in Pampanga, they will have a very strong structure. The, this strong uh, uh, the corporations, because they are very well uh, experienced uh, from uh, FBC Korea, and they can really make a good church, good church ministry there. And so, when you are planting a church, like I mentioned briefly far ago, 
At first, one missionary will be sent, and he will put the door knocked in, and soul winning one by one, and establish Bible studying uh, program during the weekday. And when the people are coming bigger in numbers, four or five family, families, then they look for a rent, rent, uh, the rent house, a house with uh, some uh, small salas in the middle and uh, one or two rooms, so past, the mission pastor can stay there, and the Sunday they can have a worship on the, on the sala. And after that, if the members are, be, are becoming or uh, increasing, and they can pray for their own lot, or they can uh, rent a lot, and uh, they can build their own uh, building, worship building. And so this, uh, we, we have been uh, helping many churches, mission churches in the Philippines uh, during many years. And for example, in province, if you want to build a small church with a foundation of a concrete and about five layers of a hollow block and set up with a, a coconut timber and then uh, the walls make, make with a amakan, you know what amakan is? The, the bamboo weaving. Uh, that's amakan. Nipa is uh, cheaper than amakan. And then amakan wall and uh, GI sheet on the top. And you can have 60 to 70 capacity sitting. And it costs only $1,000. Without buying the lot. You just rent. In the province, you can rent uh, maybe for five years and another five-year option, and then you can pay 500 pesos per month or one, up to 1,000 pesos a month, depends on the location. So this is, we need to do something like this also in Pampanga, because Pampanga is much more expensive than Bohol. So we, maybe we, we cannot buy right away. In Bohol, we have our own property, we have our own building, and it's a very nice uh, probably one of the best buildings, uh, church buildings in the Bohol Island. But in Pampanga, it's more expensive. So we really have to pray whether we have to the rent the, rent, uh, the, the lot. The lot is, we need uh, at least about 300, uh, no, let's say 1,000 square meters at least because uh, to start some other activities. Now, the Pampanga has only... Uh, maybe less than a half size of this building here and everything is done in one place but we need a worship space young people's meeting and the children's Sunday school and a small space for the kitchen and so we need some space so this is how we at BBC Mission Church needs to be built so please uh, when they become bigger and bigger, they have their own uh, building and lot, and that's the, the ideal situation that we can pray for. So, we at BBC, we have two, two churches and one seminary, and we, as long as you are here as a members, we need to support them with the prayer and the finance. You have your own children, and then you are supporting them until they graduate the school and until they they are married. This is a very normal practice. When we begot our mission church, we also have to do that until they get married, which is equal to their organization. Until they are organized, that sending church or the mother church, we need to support. And this is how the mission church has to be started. And that's how the church in Antioch or Jerusalem started Antioch, Antioch to uh, Greece, Greece, Greece to uh, Europe and England, and England to America, and then American missionary came to Philippines and Korea. Now we are sending back some of the, our missionaries back to Philippines. Also, some Korean churches are sending missionary to Israel because many Jewish still do not believe in Jesus. So, this is how we learn from the Bible how we need to know and understand and why we need to build a church 
and how we need to build the church. Why I have briefly explained why we need to build the church is because this is what Jesus has told us. Go and teach them and baptize them. When you baptize them, of course, you are adding the member and you are building the church already. This is what Jesus did. And when he went home, he told the church to continue. And that commandment is coming down during the last 2,000 years. It, it came all the way to FBBC Korea and it already crossed the ocean and it went to Bohol and it went to Pampanga. We, are, we need to pray some of the brothers who are seriously thinking about being in the ministry. We have to pray for them and support them so our the mission church will continue to grow. Okay, so if there is any new visitors today, you need to also understand that we do not go to the heaven automatically because we are attending the church, because we are uh, bringing the tithing to the church. No, uh, if you ever, if you ever, ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then that you ask for the forgiveness of your sins, then your, your soul will be saved from falling into hell, and then you will go to heaven. That is how we get saved spiritually, and that's how, that's how we can become a child of God. Not automatically we become a child of God because our parents are Christian, because my husband or wife is Christian. No, this is a very personal decision. So if there's anyone who are not sure whether you will go to heaven or hell or if you die tonight, this is a very important point that you have to consider. And this is what Jesus, the what Bible is saying, that except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Which means you really have to accept Jesus Christ and spiritually born again then you will be able to go to heaven when you die. So, even though the message was more on the members, the Christian, born again Christian side, but I like to remind, if there is anyone who has not accepted Jesus Christ, that you can still accept Jesus and become spiritually born again. So, we, we have some trained uh, uh, soul winners, the counselors, will approach you if you have not accepted Jesus Christ after the service. So please have a good counseling and accept Jesus Christ. And the brothers and sisters that we know now how we can continue the building of our mission churches using our, our knowledge, our skills, and our capacity. So please remember and don't slow down in your ministry. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for reminding us how Jesus started his church and how he wants us to continue the building of the church. Lord, please help us that uh, we have more brothers and sisters who are willing to be in the ministry. And so help everyone to be ready so we can be building the mission churches together and so FBBC ministry will continue. Lord, thank you for the uh, brothers, families, uh, the families of our brothers and sisters who are already in the ministry and help them to have what their needs supplied. Once again, thank you for the new visitors and people who came back and so help them to understand the blessing of God in their life. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Salam